This is a video lesson for Module 5, Lesson 14. The Lesson 14 learning target is I can find common units or number of units to compare two fractions. So this lesson is going to be all about a couple different strategies that we can use to make comparing fractions a little bit easier. So we're going to start out before we jump into Problem 1 talking a little bit about our numerator and the denominator and another way that we can look at those two numbers. So let's look at the fraction 2 thirds really quickly here. We have our numerator of 2 up top and in this case this is the number of units. So this is the number of units. It represents 2 of the 3 total pieces of the whole. And so that of course means that 3 is the units. So when we're comparing two fractions, it's helpful if either the number of units or the units themselves are the same. For example, if we were to look at uh, two fractions like 5 sevenths and 2 sevenths, and we see that the units in this case are the same, it's very easy to see that since 5 is larger than 2, that 5 sevenths is greater than 2 sevenths. And likewise, when the number of units is the same, it's very easy to compare two fractions. For example, if we had the fraction 6 halves and 6 twelfths, we know that halves are larger than twelfths, and since there's 6 of both, we know that 6 halves is larger than 6 twelfths. So this idea is going to be what's really helpful today to help us compare fractions in a quicker and easier way. So now I think we're ready to jump into problem one. Let's go ahead and get started here. So problem one asks us to compare 5 sevenths and 5 twelfths. Well, if we look at these two fractions, we see that both of them have 5 as a numerator, meaning that they're, the number of units for both fractions is the same. So right off the bat, we might be able to see, well, I know that sevenths are larger than twelfths, because twelfths is going to be cut into twelve equal pieces, which are pretty small. I know that since there's five of both of them, five sevenths is greater than five twelfths. Now let's see what that looks like on a tape diagram here. So on the top tape diagram, I'm going to partition into sevenths. I'm going to do my best here. Two, three, four five, six, seven, and I'm going to shade in five of them. And on the bottom, I'm going to partition that tape diagram into twelfths. Here we go. All right, there we go, twelfths. And we can see if we are to shade in five of the 12 equal parts here, we see that it is much smaller than five of the sevenths that are shaded in. And that's because we have the same number of units on the new, as the numerator, and sevenths are much larger than twelfths. So luckily this problem was pretty simple because the two fractions had a numerator in common, which made it easy to figure out which one was larger than the other. But that's not always the case. So let's go ahead and take a look at problem two. In this problem, I'm going to be comparing two-eighths and four-tenths. So you can see already that this problem is a little bit more difficult because we have different numerators and denominators for both fractions. So when I find myself in this situation, my goal is to try to find a common numerator or denominator for both fractions. So I'm looking to see if I can multiply the numerator and the denominator of one fraction by the same number to make it match at least the numerator or the denominator of another number. And if I look at the fraction 2 eighths, I see if I multiply the numerator by 2, that I'm going to get a numerator of 4. I'm going to find an equivalent fraction with a numerator of 4, which, of course, matches with my numerator uh, of my second fraction. So since I want this to be an equivalent fraction, though, I'm going to also multiply my denominator by the same number. And so I'm going to get an equivalent fraction of 4 sixteenths. So now that I've rewritten this fraction, uh, so that the number of units matches the fraction up above, I can compare them a lot easier. So now I'm comparing 4 sixteenths and 4 tenths. 
it's the same number of units, 4 and 4. Well, in this case, I know that sixteenths are a lot smaller than tenths because I'm splitting something into 16 equal pieces versus splitting it into 10 equal pieces. And since both fractions have 4 in the numerator, I know that 4 tenths is going to be larger than 4 sixteenths. So if I go back to my original fraction, I can compare that 2 eighths is less than 4 tenths. So let me show you what this all looked like on the tape diagrams down below. So we first started out by looking at 2 eighths. So I'm going to partition this top tape diagram into eighths. And we can go ahead and shade in two of those eighths. And then in the bottom tape diagram, we had 4 tenths. So let's go ahead and shade those in now. So already we can kind of see that 4 tenths is larger. But when we did this multiplication right here, what we were actually doing is we were partitioning those 2 eighths and doubling the number of shaded regions and turning those 2 eighths into 4 sixteenths. And so what this allowed us to do is figure out uh, the same number of units for both of the fractions, which of course led us to this point right here, which allowed us to easily compare the two fractions. Let's move on to problem three now where we're going to have another problem that has us having to rewrite one of the fractions so to make it easier to compare. So in problem three we're going to be comparing seven tenths and three fifths. And so in this case we're kind of doing the same strategy as problem two. We're looking to see if we can multiply uh, one of these fractions, the numerator and the denominator, by the same number to make it easier to compare with the other one. So I'm actually looking at my denominator for this second fraction, 5. And I notice that if I multiply my denominator by 2, I will actually have the same denominator as my first fraction. So I'm going to take 3 fifths, and I am going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2, because I want to end up with 10 as my no denominator. I want to end up with the same units. So if I do that, I find that 3 fifths is equal to 6 tenths. So now that if I rewrite these two fractions, now that they both have the same units of tenths, it makes it really easy to compare. Because I have more tenths in 7 tenths than 6 tenths, I know that 6 tenths is less than 7 tenths. So that pretty much covers the two main strategies that we can use when we encounter two fractions that do not have common units or common number of units. Uh, we can see if we can try to find a numerator or a denominator of an equivalent fraction that's the same and then compare them a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and put it all together here for problem four. We have three different problems in problem four, and we're going to utilize all the strategies that we just learned and see if we can figure out which one of the fractions is larger than the other. So let's start with A here. We have four fifths and four sevenths. And so in this case, we see that we have the same numerator or the same number of units. So we need to look down below to our denominators and see which ones are larger. So I th know that fifths are larger than sevenths. So I know that four fifths is going to be greater than four sevenths because there's the same number of them, but fifths are larger than sevenths. So that one was pretty straightforward. Moving on to B, we have eight tenths and four sixths. I can see that if I multiply the numerator of this number by two, I'm going to get an equal number of units, 8, as an equivalent fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite 4 sixths, but multiply it, the numerator and denominator, by 2. So I'm going to find the equivalent fraction of 8 twelfths. So now I'm going to compare 8 tenths and 8 twelfths. And this is kind of similar to the first problem here, where we have the same number of units. And I know that tenths are larger than twelfths, so I know that eight tenths is larger than eight twelfths. So therefore, eight tenths 
is larger than or greater than 4 sixths. All right, and finally, on our last problem here, uh, we have 5 twelfths and 2 thirds. Nothing in common for both of these fractions. But I can see that if I take my denominator of the second fraction here, and if I were to multiply that by 4, I would have a similar unit as the first fraction. So I can take 2 thirds, multiply the numerator and the denominator by 4 to find an equivalent fraction in the same units. So that would be 8 twelfths. So now I'm comparing 5 twelfths and 8 twelfths. And since we have the same units or the same denominator, this makes it really easy to see that 8 twelfths is larger than 5 twelfths or 5 twelfths is less than 8 twelfths. So therefore, back to the original fractions, 5 twelfths is less than 2 thirds. So there you have it for lesson 14. And at this point, you should be able to answer any of the problems in the lesson 14 problem set. But as always, if you get stuck, you can come on back and watch any of the parts of the video that might help you out. So good luck and thanks for watching.